Hi there, namaste, I'm Katrina. Hi, I'm Jen, welcome. And we are here bringing you the final episode on our seven chakra workshop series. So it is the Sahasra and it's all about the crown. Ta -da. We made it, can you believe we're on our seventh one? Seventh, we should be enlightened beings now. <laughs> the only hope, it's just like something I work towards all the time. Oh. What we'll do, I think, is that we can, you know, every time we get to the top, we go back and then we work through each part again. Um, so we've got the Muladhara, which is the root. Then we've got the Swadhisthan, which is the sacral. And then you've got the Manipura, which is the stomach, the, um, the um, not solar plexus, the, yeah, the solar plexus. Yeah, solar yeah. plexus. Right, I was going to say, I get mixed up with the solar plexus and sternum. The Anahata <laughs> is the sternum, right there. Yeah. And the Vishuddha is the throat or Vishuddhi and the Ajna is the third eye. And now we're on Sahasra and Sahasra is the crown chakra. And it's all about spirituality and love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have here, what does it do? It means infinite or infinite. And um, it's a difficult um, concept to get past because we always see things as there's a deadline, there's a time and uh, we come to an end of time and we work with a sequence of we know timetables don't we we know when it comes to part a of the day part b of the day part c of the day morning lunch afternoon evening whatever we we understand those concepts but when something is infinite that means there was never a beginning and there is never an end so how does this fit in with your um, understanding of you know, <laughs> concept of infinite. So, Jen, it, any idea? A very complex thing to understand. And even using the word infinite doesn't do it justice because it is completely limitless, right? Um, so, even in some practices, they call this samadhi, um, where you reach this state of just absolute bliss. You no longer identify with your ego or materialistic things, or even your body, which you appear like. When you look at other people, you don't see their physical, you just see a soul. Mm. Um, it becomes, it, you know, when you use those words, it seems very simple, but when you are imagining like letting go of all of these things that we've been conditioned to feel and think and worldly condition yeah. yeah all our lives it's yeah. kind of like wow if we could actually get to that point where we just let it all go and it also yeah. it also connects to um sexuality and also who we are as people because i think there's a sense of infinite comes from um where you don't necessarily uh, respond to being a man nor do you respond to being a woman there is like sex does not involve is not involved in that and i've been reading osho's book on sex matters and it talks about that quite clearly how you get to a point where you have sex and then it's not sex and it becomes a meditation and and i think that is connected to your ability to access your sahasra to be able to they, some people would say tantric sex maybe you know because you're in this space where you're meditating and it's bliss and it's continuous <laughs> so, yeah and it's that kind of like feeling that lasts forever yeah yeah and this is where people think oh kundalini is very tantric it's very like sexual in nature and when we're talking about the crown chakra there's actually two aspects to this mm -hmm. there's the emotional side which can be closely related to tantra and then there's the knowledge where you're developing that spiritual evolution or um knowledge and this is also significant to the crown chakra as well, as well, is that you are realizing that the more you know, the more you, you, you're you learning you didn't know, right? Exactly. You're like, wow, I was completely ignorant about this. And it gives you this sense of humility. Like, there's always something more to learn. There's always another area in yourself or in your life that you can grow. Um, and so... This is, you know, the the duality of the crown chakra is that, yes, it's the emotional side, it's the tantric side, but it's also this like continuous development. Yeah, yeah. Well. 
Yeah, I, I like that. That's a very good way to think about it. And it's always about continuous development. And throughout our chakras, even though if you think, oh, I'm, I'm cleared, I'm, I'm good, you're never clear, really. You know, the fact that you're still alive means that you're never clear. There's always stuff to work on. So, you know, it's well, about things come, up. things come up all the time and then it can trigger something, you know, and then you you're kind of reminded of that part of the self again, you know. There are some of us that we're so evolved in our lifetimes, not me, but, you know, <laughs> very devout people that can get to this, this state of like beyond consciousness and just kind of living in this samadhi. Mm. Um, whereas, you know, the rest of us regular folk, we can just continue to work on ourselves and that's how we can view the crown chakra and how we can utilize that in our everyday life and we'll talk about that a lot more throughout this this as well so yeah i know this is going to blow your mind this session because it is um, a totally different concept compared to all the other chakras that we've talking uh, spoken about, about. Um, mm -hmm. even the ajna the third eye is about intuition but the hasra is that kind of like knowing it's 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 about it's beyond, it's beyond our human capacities, beyond our physical capacity. So it is connected to spirituality and we all have that ability to access that. And so this is why chakra clearing, you know, eventually gets you up there. So um, yeah, it's quite an amazing thing. So it's um, being able to explore reality beyond the realm of, of your physical senses. That's what I mean by spirituality. So it's like it's not tangible you can't touch it it's it's something that is beyond you mm -hmm. so um, this chakra is also it's about knowing and on a physical level we can bring it down to physicality <laughs> it does affect the endocrine system uh, the endocrine gland the mm -hmm. cerebral cortex and of course the nervous system because it's the nervous system that's connected to everything and um so that's that's basically in a nutshell what it does um, what, what does it correspond to? Let's see if I can make that font a little bit bigger. There we go. Right. So the descriptive word is I accept and I know. So it's about accepting all things and being okay with it and going like, you know, thinking back to when we were locked down in India, it got to a point where we were all just like, yep. That's it. I accept. <laughs> you know, we couldn't really, we couldn't really plan too much because of the lockdown. And I think we're all in this place now where collectively as a society, we either accept it or we go mad, you know, and this is probably why mental illness is on the rise at the moment, because there's a lot of people who are finding it difficult to accept. But once you accept stuff, you're not um, mentally forcing yourself to try and make sense of it. You just go like, yep, okay, this is what it is at the moment. The universe is, there's a challenge. I need to do this. And, 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 you know, we're all being put in this position to deal with whatever it is that we need to deal with, you know, so it's about accepting it and being okay with it. Yeah. Right. And not looking at it like you're defeated to the point of submission. <laughs> you're just like, <laughs> I give up. Because within that, there is, liberation there is a lot of freedom that comes along with saying like i accept this i know that this is a part of what i'm dealing with right now mm -hmm. um i surrender to it you know and move on from it you know and it's just part of opening that crown chakra even more towards that like ultimate liberation of just kind of things bothering you you know mm -hmm. yeah exactly so the force is consciousness um, and um, the sense is divine, so you have a sense of feeling divine, connected to spirituality. So there is no food involved with this, it's all about fasting. And as we've spoken before about fasting, you have to prepare for fasting. It's not something you can just do. You have to read up on it, study it, and, and find out what, there's different types of fast. There are water fasts, there are juicing fasts, there is all kinds of different fast all this fasting where you don't eat at all and like the muslims they don't eat or drink during the daylight for 30 days but come evening time they gorge and eat all kinds of things <laughs> so you know there's different types of fasting ways and so um yeah that that's something that i think because your mind is not on food and not on drink or whatever then you are then put in a place where you think about things um more than your physical body you know so mm -hmm. that's where the fasting comes in yeah 
And the element we've got is thought. The color is violet, which is why Jen is wearing lovely violet clothes. <laughs> the celestial body is Uranus. The creature and animal is a human being because according to um, Hin Hindu the reincarnation, human beings are at their highest part of um, reincarnation, aren't they? It's like you, go to, you, you become a human and then it's like samadhi, right? So this is where the human being comes in, the sense of intellect and knowing. So that's, that's where that comes in. The sound is silence. Um, physical is apathy, alienation, closed-mindedness. So this is all the negative sides. Um, symptoms without any physical cause. So you might be experiencing symptoms, but there is no physical ailment to to explain what those symptoms are and why you're getting it. So this could be uh, a, a result of perhaps the Sahasra being rather blocked, you know, so there is that. Emotionally, um, when we are at peace, we'll feel bliss and there's despair on the shadow side. There's doubt because you doubt, you know, your experiences and what's going on. You're not sure. This is very, very new. Um, joy. And then there's also peace. Peace because it's like, yeah, I'm ready, you know, I, yeah. And usually I think a lot of people who do experience these sort of emotions are usually about to die from something. Maybe they've had cancer or something like that. They might have this sense of like being at peace because they know that their time is coming up and, and you know, you're just accepting and, and letting go, you know, so there is an element of that. And the mental state is self-consciousness, so yeah. You know, and we may be able to recognize um, some of these characteristics in our relationships that we've had with narcissists, possibly. Um, so if you are deficient in energy, so that means that not enough energy is entering or coming through the crown chakra, you may feel lifeless, mm. sl uh, sluggish, passive, um, just kind of into yourself. Maybe you might feel depressed very low energy. However, on the other side, you know, when there's too much energy coming in, you know, you may feel like very manic, agitated, reactive, mm -hmm. um, instead of being more calculated, aggressive, um, and too outward or too out of yourself. Yeah. Um, and so even in narcissistic relationships, we can even see these two aspects in the partnership, right? So maybe the narcissist is the one that has too much energy going in. They may be too agitated, agitated, reactive, aggressive. And then you on the other side may have been experiencing the deficiency, you know, where you're just kind of walled off, you're blocked, you've closed yourself in as a protective measure. Yeah, which is understandable. And, yeah. And whatever the case is, this is definitely a good chakra to focus on to help relieve yourself of those symptoms and even those those reinforced symptoms, right? Over time, we become conditioned and then it just becomes habit. And so this is a good chakra for us to work on to overcome that and move past that. Mm -hmm. um, and so even for me now, and Katrina knows this about me, but I've been dealing with these weird pains since October. Mm -hmm. And I've had testing done and I've been to so many doctors about this rib pain that is just unexplained. And I'm at the point where I'm like, you know what? If nothing is going to be acute inside my body that's gonna require like emergency intervention, um, like an appendix rupturing or something like that, then I need to do things to move on from this. And we were talking earlier about maybe hosting um, discussions on creating a sadhana, which is like, it can be a morning routine, a spiritual morning routine regardless of what religion you practice or what, you know, prayers you, you like to say, it can all be incorporated basically into this sadhana or this routine to get you into these spiritual practices early in your day to relieve you of these, these burdens, you know, maybe feeling passive or feeling blocked and sluggish and just getting a good start to things. Exactly. So it doesn't take much time. It doesn't at all. Right. No, exactly. No. Yeah, you just have to, it's a devotion to yourself. And if you're willing to devote positive energy to yourself, then it will bring positive outcomes. Simple as that. 
Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So um, what happens when the Sahasra is unbalanced? So we have the abuse of lower um, life forms. So like the sense of um, human imperialism, where you think or someone thinks that they're better off than you and, and putting you down. And, um, and that's very much narcissistic, isn't it? We're experienced that a lot with narcissistic partners or family um, or any friends even that are narcissistic. So um, it makes you doubt and deny. And this interesting point um, is religious extremism. Now we witness that a lot when there's a lot of um, war in the world or, or where there's a lot of terrorism. And this is always connected to religious extremism where they believe and they really, really sincerely believe that they're in the right and they're trying to save the world by enforcing their religious views. So the opposite is obviously true if your Sahasra is clear because you accept that other people have got different views and different faiths and different where they come from a different place and you accept that and you know yourself that you have a different faith or practice or a belief in a god or, or, or the universe yours is a different system to theirs and you accept that and and you make space for them so this is a very very special place to be and um i've i've experienced that in my own family um with my um you know some parts of my family are christian some parts of my family are muslim and um it's, it's really quite amazing because they both make space for each other and it's it's a wonderful thing to see both coexisting at the same time both totally different views and um they just both accept each other this is what you do you need to do this i love you and you go ahead and do this and and yep the same goes for you you need to you know pray five times a day i'll support you with that you know love you you know it's it's that that is the difference you know so you can either be coming from a place again it comes from the uh from the muladhara from fear that is instilled in the muladhara and everything comes up through all the chakras and then resonates in the crown chakra and if religious extremism is one of them that means you haven't cleared your muladhara and you're coming from a place of hate so or a place of fear so there is that for you. Absolutely. And, you know, we were talking before about how this is an area of gaining knowledge. So when it comes to these types of relationships, any relationship, in fact, it's about educating yourself. If you meet someone new and they may have a new practice or they follow a religion that you're not familiar with, but you really enjoy the company of this person, it would be to both your benefit if you educated yourself mm -hmm. on each other's beliefs, right? And so when you expand your mind and step out of like dead or limiting perspectives, um, you're open to more things, right? So reading books, watching videos, listening to podcasts, um, anything that promotes self-growth exactly. is going to be beneficial to your growth and also accepting others into your life that you might otherwise have not thought of having a friendship or relationship with um, just to kind of help you identify your areas of ignorance or prejudice um, and just deepen your own self growth and knowledge. Yeah. So like Socrates said, the more I learn, the less I realize I know. <laughs> that is, that's very true. And, it, and it's very humbling. It's a humble experience to recognize that you don't know everything. And it's usually people who are very narrow minded are those that feel that they know everything and they want to instill that knowledge on you because they're so proud that they know that little tiny thing, you know? So the more you know, the more you realize there's so much more out there and the more you realize that, you know what, I'm just little, it doesn't matter, you know? So there is that element of it. So, you know, and, and if anything, what you gain from learning about other people's faiths and their point of views is that you gain a, a, a wider perspective of things and it makes you much, much humble person and much, much nicer person and a much more interesting person to be around, you know? So you will attract more genuine people. And this is, again, you know, you, we are like magnets, we send out what our vibrations are and we attract what we send out. So if you don't want to attract the narcissistic kind of character, you want to step out of that place of being greedy or being um, like, you know, so proud that you know that one thing that you do and, 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 and move out from that space and, and, and gain knowledge and gain understanding from a wider perspective. And that, that helps a lot too, yeah. 
Right. And the more you are able to objectively think for yourself, the less likely you are to be controlled by someone else and their opinions. Exactly. So I think this is where narcissists can really take advantage of someone. Um, you know, of course, if you're not standing up for yourself, but also if you don't have the information to be able to stand up for yourself in a situation to be able to think more broad and more open and say, you know what, like, you know, I respect your opinion and that's what you believe, but it's don't force me into it. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I know in my past relationship, it was I was young. Right. And he was a few years older than me. Mm -hmm. And so it was more so, OK, he knows so much more than me. Whatever he says, I need to trust. Yeah. Um, and then eventually it's just used as a tool against you to kind of expose you more in a very weak or vulnerable way. Yeah. Um, and so this is a way that we can take that control back, think for ourselves and be astute in what we feel and what we say so we're not falling prey to narcissists again exactly so this is where it ends right so we right. we're healing from narcissistic abuse by putting a stop to it by gaining our power by learning uh, and becoming better ourselves so that we become the warrior rather than acting as a warrior coming from a place of fear. We become a warrior and abundant and we stand clear and we know our boundaries because we're learning and we're growing. So, you know, let's open up that Sahasra. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So what happens when the Sahasra is healthy? So we experience bliss being in but not in this world. So it's a sense of like, um, not sure I know how to explain this very well. So it's like, uh, uh, you, you feel, it's like, it's like you're feeling really, really satisfied, content, and like everything is okay, even though the world is falling apart. Um, you know, like it, like we experience today with the pandemic, people are getting scared. There's a lot of fear around. Um, but in your mind and you're accepting it and you are okay. So there's a sense of, 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 of blissfulness there. Um, so um, we also experience all as one. And this is a very, very difficult concept because everyone we meet in life has a purpose to why we meet them, to teach us something about how we can improve. So if we see people rather than a threat, but being as uh, a lesson to us in life like for instance my ex-husband as much as yes it was a difficult relationship he was a not no excuse he shouldn't be in the way he was to me absolutely but had I not been with him I wouldn't be the mature person I am today because I came from a spoiled brat part of my life I was I used to get everything given to me on a golden plate and I had everything my way and and you know I was I was yeah I came from that place but um it changed me a lot and being with him helped me realize that, you know, I can't put myself first because he was so demanding and it scared me. So I learned to put other people first. So, you know, it, it was what I needed, you know, and, and, and that's just an example. So everyone that we meet, no matter how difficult they are in our life, you, you meet someone who's rude to you on the train, for instance, it could be trying to teach you something about yourself. If you just lean in and listen to what that lesson is rather than going, oh, F you, whatever, for saying that, you know, or, or losing your temper. Maybe if you lose your temper, there, there's a reason for why we're losing our temper. What, what is the reason behind that, you know? If we can kind of like be the observer in our own mind instead of, instead of trying to um, react, you know, it's all about listening and observing. Yeah, exactly. So that, I think that's what I mean by the experience all, of all as one, because we are the good person, we're also the bad person, we are, you know, the person who's struggling um, for money, we're also the person who's abundant, you know, so we're all these different people. So what do you think about that, Jen? So that perfectly leads into what I kind of wanted to bring up next, which was stop believing your thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Because your thoughts. <laughs> Yeah, we're conditioned to think, you know, like I, my thoughts, whatever, but sometimes our own thoughts can be toxic right. and, you know, learning more about different cultures and how different people within cultures interact over time, depending on how you're raised or what you're exposed to, as far as like in the media, um, the type of information that you're taking in can develop 
how you talk to yourself, how you think to yourself, right? So like you were saying, you see someone, they're having a bad day, they lash out at you and it causes you to lash out at them. Mm -hmm. It's those thoughts in your mind that say, okay, well, if you're going to be rude, I'm going to be rude too. Or you cannot become that, that thought, that perpetuating negativity. You can say, okay, well, this is the fund fundamental error in trying to understand your fellow human, right? Is reacting with like an equal reaction, you know, that you got from them. Exactly. Um, changing those thoughts and learning to control them to discover a new reality for yourself. And this is token of the crown chakra. Mm -hmm. So what's key to this is meditation. And I know meditation is like a eh, word for a lot of people, but it can just be like a sit quiet time. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, going for a walk. A walk is a meditation. If you take time, right. take time to be out in nature, just sit under a tree. I, I posted a uh, post not that long ago about the energy that we get from trees. So if you get the chance to have a look at that post and it really shows you how we absorb the energies from trees. So we can really recharge ourselves by just not even doing anything, but just touching a tree, hugging it if you want to, or sitting in front of it and just close your eyes and breathe. That's all you need to do. You don't actually need to do anything else. There is no magic trick to it. It's just simply allowing the heart rate to calm down, calm down enough that you have got rid of that anxiety feeling. And I tell you what, when you're out in nature, the sounds of the birds, the sounds of the leaves falling on the ground, the sounds of the, the, the ground that you walk on is enough to just calm that mind down. And you just just switch yourself off and just just go there and be at peace and you'd be amazed how quickly you recharge and it's the only thing that i found um without any yoga practice without any meditation practice that actually really truly grounds me is just going out for a walk you, you know you can do it with a loved one i do it with a loved one um or you can do it with your dog who's also a loved one <laughs> you know my best friend my best friend daisy exactly and your dog will probably teach you a lot that you don't know you know dogs are are fantastic creatures and they they get excited over a leaf falling or whatever and then it takes you out of that space of being in your head to like you know spending time and engaging in, in what's real what's in front of you is what's real you know so that right exactly and these thoughts that are happening asking them are they true mm. are they necessary what purpose are they serving and where are they coming from why do I have, you know, like these randoms or these negative thoughts, you know, or things that are kind of poisoning me? Um, where are they coming from? And then detach from them. Yeah. So one thing we learn when we're like early students of meditation is not fighting the thoughts that you have that are just kind of flipping in your mind, right? When you're trying to meditate, because when you're trying to be the quietest is when your mind wants to be the loudest. Yeah. Your mind and, really, come, everything comes in. Yeah. Right. And it's not like trying to shove things in a box that it's too small to fit in and like close the lid. It's not that because then you're fighting those thoughts too much. They're going to come back even stronger. It's acknowledging. Mm -hmm. Yes, I need to add this to my grocery list. Thank you for reminding me. And then move on. Yeah. You know? yeah. And those kind of things. And so it's, Witnessing, acknowledging, and then detaching from them, you know? And of course, if it's something bad, if it's a bad thought, where is this coming from? And since when, and why is this okay for me to think this? Yeah, because um, what you're doing to yourself is lowering your vibrations by thinking those bad thoughts, and then you're going to manifest them. And um, I think somehow we, you know, we, we manifest things that we are scared of, don't we? We manifest fear because that's an intense feeling is fear and um we manifest that so like if you are worried that you don't have any money you're going to manifest that because you don't think oh i want a thousand pounds um you you actually manifest the lack of it because you want it so badly so it's about for me i think if you know if, if i want something and and this is what i've learned and it does actually work is that i think about it and then I let it go and I surrender I just think, okay, the universe is going to take care of that in his own time. I will get what I need and, you know, it will happen when it happens. And, you know, I haven't gone hungry, so that's good. <laughs> so, you know, and I, I haven't actually returned home from 
um, the lockdown. I'm still in limbo. I'm in the UK, but that's okay. And I'm, you know, making it work from here. And that's okay too, because, um, you know, I've discovered this channel where, you know, we're putting all our energies together and helping people. And, and that's very, very fulfilling. So it's, you know, you just never know where the universe is going to send you, where you're going to go. So it's important to be relaxed and be okay with it. And acceptance and letting go is a big part of that. And that's been a massive lesson for me personally, massive. <laughs> it's true. And I think over time, we just become too comfortable with feeling fear. That's right. And we want to feel fear. It's almost like as if, well, I haven't felt fear for a while. What else am I scared of? <laughs> you know, what like, do I need to worry about? What do I need to stress exactly about? You know? What do I need to stress about? You know, it's like sometimes I find myself worried unnecessarily about my family's health. And it's like, they're over there. They're taking care of themselves. I can't do anything about it. You know, a simple phone call to my parents is enough to kind of like relieve my mind that they're okay. And then that's fine. But otherwise it's like, I end up stressing and it's like, why am I, why is this in my mind? Because it's their, it's their responsibility. I shouldn't really have any attachment to that, even though I love them and they're my family, but I should let that go because it's just pulling my own energies down. And the truth is my parents would not want me to worry like about them like that. So, you know, that mm -hmm. is the thing. So it's, it's that, that we want to worry. It's in our nature that we want to worry. I think it's down to evolution that we're always looking for food. We're always trying to find, we're trying to solve things, problem solvers. That's what humans are. We're problem solvers. But that in the end doesn't actually do us any good because it, you know, it stops us from being, which we're supposed to be human being. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And experiencing things as they truly are. Yeah. And not trying to put our own spin on it or agenda or opinion just yeah yeah experience them as they are and also here's the other thing right i know a lot of people are really really affected by the news and stuff turn it off stop watching it you know you don't have control of the wider world but you do have control about your own feelings and how you respond to that so it, like for me i've decided i'm only going to watch the news once every three to four days that's it if anything is important that comes up i'm sure i'll hear about it or or see it or get feeds on facebook or something and and that will then it will make me think right i better watch the news but otherwise i don't need to know you know, I live in this bubble that I'm in at the moment, and this is fine with me. <laughs> you know, nothing out of there really, really matters. You know, exactly. Someone will call me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Someone will let me know if it's bad news. You know, bad news travels really fast, so I don't need to worry about it. So, uh, continuing on, we've got the integration, expression, and actualization of such peak experiences. So, being able to really, really experience. Um, um, extreme happiness and, and I think that comes a lot with being able to feel as if you know you meet another person and you come from a place of love and you love that other person rather than thinking what has she got that I don't have you know because that that is the ego talking that egos we're always wanting to compare ourselves with other people oh she's nice and slim I'm fat or whatever you know this is just is this kind of like outlook that we have and and um it's the opposite of that obviously it's being able to come from a place of love and again it always relates down to the muladhara and to the swadistan because jealousy possessiveness and how that resonates when we're up in the Sahasra and that comes out with our experience. Right. And so this is where, and this might sound like it doesn't relate, but it does, right? So cleanliness. Oh, yes. Whatever your idea of cleanliness is, whatever level of cleanliness brings you that, oh, I can relax. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we need to strive for. It doesn't mean you have to be a minimalist in the way you choose to present yourself or adorn yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Some people like to do the no makeup. Some people like to do a lot of makeup. I like to do a little, you know? Some people want a minimalist wardrobe. Some people like lots and lots of options and accessories. Or you can just kind of ha have a balance, you know, of what you like to have and what you can do without. Um, so I think a lot of people think, you know, when it comes to clutter, whether it's yourself, your mind, your house, you have to be minimalist and that's not the case, but it is about creating a space mm -hmm. and an environment for yourself free of emotional distress. 
Um, And so, you know, if you're going to take on a meditation practice or a a sadhana, daily sadhana, a morning ritual, um, you have to have the space for it. And I'm not talking about a big, beautiful room with hardwood floors and flowing, billowing curtains. It has to be, you know, a small space just for you where you have things that are meaningful to you, whether it's some sort of religious idol, a crystal, a mala, you light candles, put a candle, you know, just having a space that is free of eye clutter, mind clutter, things that will trigger maybe not so great thoughts getting those things out of your life and having this space for yourself, simplifying your surroundings to purify the outside so you can more easily purify the inside. Exactly. And it could be, it could mean anything, anything that you feel comfortable with, you know? So it's, if you are someone who likes clutter or is okay with clutter, that's fine too. You know, you just gotta, you just gotta go with what you feel comfortable with, you know? So um, we're all different and that's the beauty that we are all different because it would be a very boring world if we were all the same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Cause part of, you know, sometimes when we're drawn to people is we see a bit of ourselves in them, you know? And so when you look at it in that way, that, you know, like I really enjoy Katrina. I love Katrina because like, I see part of myself in her, like the good things that I I see in myself. I'm like, oh, they're in her and she's even better at them than me. So it makes me want to work harder. (laughs) And the same goes for you, Jen. I see so much good in you that sometimes I wish I had that or it's like I recognize the same aspects of that in myself. And so, you know, that's the sense of kindership there. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, moving on, we've got saintliness. So obviously if you are at bliss you'll have that sense of saintliness about you not saying that you're going to go around saying i'm saint or <laughs> you know not like that but just just a sense of peacefulness and the sense of like you know you people recognize the energy that you will exude you know and we've met a few people who, who we got to know in india who we could probably say very saintliness kind of people you know and, and uh, like my ex um, yoga teacher um, during my first practice uh, you met him, didn't you? Yeah, and Taraji, he walks into a room and it's like as if, it's almost like it was, he was Jesus in some ways. He was so, he had this exude, this amazing, amazing aura about him and everyone could sense it, you know? So yeah, it's just, some people are just like that. Yeah, yeah. very easy to talk to. Mm-hmm. Like he had great conversation and so much knowledge about a vast, amount of things but he didn't make you feel inferior or stupid because you didn't know it you know like he had a a very like magical way of presenting information to make you feel like oh wow you know yeah exactly I was thrilled to meet up with him again considering that it was my first yoga teacher training that I had obviously worked with him and that was in Dharamshala and then uh, coming to Rishikesh he ended up being in Rishikesh at the same time, I was so grateful. It was amazing getting the chance to to spend time with him, even though it was such a short time. It was it was lovely, absolutely lovely. So yeah, people and like, I think yeah, carry on, carry on. yeah, with people like him, and then people that you meet that have these saintly aspects or come across as saintly, is that they're not any different than us. No, no, they just committed to their own spiritual practice. Exactly. And that shows in how they present themselves in their energy, in their aura, when they walk into a room and you're just captivated. It's a level of commitment to the self, to your practice, to your will, to what you believe. Mm. And it shows. Yeah. It shows. It's not something that's that we can't achieve for ourselves. So when we walk into a room, people are captivated with us. There it's may just, already be, you never know. <laughs> You know? But it's just showing that level of commitment to yourself and everyone else can see it without you ever even saying a word. Exactly, exactly. So, yes. so then obviously samadhi, which um, refers to nirvana perhaps, being at peace, that sense of like um, experiencing all those things that we've already mentioned. But samadhi is something a little bit more. They say that everyone who dies experiences it, that sense of like, peace 
of of knowing of um just being at peace with everything and accepting a massive sense of acceptance so that is that is samadhi and um there is a documentary online that actually illustrates samadhi beautifully. Just type into Google, um, Google, YouTube, samadhi, and um, I think it's a Gaia documentary. Fascinating. I have we haven't got the time to explore all of that here, but it's it it was an amazing documentary. So if you are interested in the whole concept of samadhi, do check it out on YouTube. I should have put a link in, but maybe if I can find it, I'll put a link in the page. So yeah, so that is when it's healthy, and so now we move to the point of what we can do to help the Sahasra. So obviously with all the energetic healing exercises that we've spoken about before, like Kundalini, uh, meditation, um, meditation, again, you can really, really focus and, 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 and make it much more of a, um, an upward sense. So it goes up towards the crown. There are lots of meditations and it's not just simply breathing in and out and breathing in and out. There's lots more different focuses or, you know, um, literature that you can look into to, to look into that bit more. There's obviously the yoga, sound bowl healing, which um, Jen will talk about, as well as Reiki. Now, Qigong is very interesting because there is an actual Qigong practice that actually is specific for the Sahasra, and it's involving where your arms are about um, shoulder width, hit, um, height, and um, you're imagining that you've got this bowl. So the bowl kind of is a sphere around your body and what happens after a while you have the sense of energy coming up or going into your head and and so they call it the governing vessel 20 which is in the Chinese traditional medicine which is the GV20 is the top um, point at the top of your head which is actually where the crown chakra is situated so there is a traditional Chinese medicine connection with the crown chakra as well and if you are a kind of person who does um, reflexology and you know acupuncture you will be aware of these different points and a lot of the points actually resonate and connect with the chakra points as well so um, it's it's interesting the connection with that so yeah and um, then there's Tai Chi obviously and like I said earlier on about getting out in nature um, taking care of your nutrition, that's also very important. And, and with your nutrition and you're aware about what you eat when you eat and all this sort of thing, you may then decide to add a fast into it to just kind of explore these um, feelings of, uh, of accessing the crown chakra more, you know, by when you're ready. You will know yourself when you're ready. It's not one of those things that, you know, right, okay, let's go and fast, you know, you, your body, your mind, and if you're doing a lot of meditation, you start to then feel the senses. It's the same kind of sense that um, when we were at the yoga teacher training, some, some of the students were actually doing, um, uh, they, they weren't talking, they, they had total silence, wasn't it, for like a day or two days or something, and just, just fasting from talking, abstaining from saying anything, because it's not just food, it's also what we say, and what we take in so you know it's about increasing our vibration so that we're in a higher level so what we say is just as important as what we eat you know so there's a big part of that. and that's nutrition and then obviously unplug from technology and enjoy yourself because you can't get to a higher vibrational space without feeling happy and whatever that means to you do whatever that means obviously as long as it's not hurting other people, but you know, find a way to be happy. Yeah. Uh, and what we talk about here, we're not saying, you know, inundate yourself with all these practices. Pick one or two. Yeah, exactly. That work for you. Yeah, yeah. It's a process. And, you know, I brought up the whole cleanliness thing because I have a closet problem. It's too full of clothes. <laughs> So instead of overwhelming myself with going through and doing a giant closet purge, I do it once a week mm. where I tell myself once a week, I'm going to pull one or two things out that I don't need anymore. And it's not a shock to the system. Yeah. You know, this, this, this clearing the, you know, chakras are moving energy and trying to get rid of these blockages. They don't happen in one day or overnight. And yeah. it's not one, any magical practice that makes it happen. It can be a combination of a couple. It can change. You know, it's it's whatever works for you. So don't feel like, oh my gosh, this is so much work that they talk about. 
no. So start small, pick one, pick one. And and don't even do the whole thing. Pick one and maybe do like a quarter of it or something, you know. And if you yeah. need any help, we are on the on the Facebook page or Facebook group. So you can contact us and ask us anything, absolutely anything. Right. And we're here and we're here to support each other. And all this information is free. It's only when you decide to take on our services, then obviously there's an energetic exchange from you, your commitment and financial exchange to us with our energies. Because when we do a session, there is a lot of energy that we put out and there's a lot of um, pre preparation for it mentally, emotionally, physically, as well as we need to clear our own energies before we can work with you. And on top of that, like when I was teaching three sessions in a day of kundalini yoga i had to go and have an epsom bath a very long epsom bath because i was all over the place my mind was was like we 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 taking stuff and you think that being on the computer or being on zoom is any is, is is any less it's not trust me it's not because emotions travel and and it doesn't matter where in the world you are if you're going through some bad stuff then i'm gonna feel it you know so it you've got to you've got to we, we have to as energetic healers we have to kind of like put a sphere around ourselves to make ourselves safe because we could easily be brought down so this is why we charge for services because it takes up a lot of energy so the stuff that we provide and we do talks and things like that you know you can take what you want and do what you want with it but when it comes to actually helping you on a one-to-one -one basis um there is a service that we expect to be an exchange whether it's an exchange of energies or something else that's absolutely fine so. yeah and i mean writing the classes researching the classes um making um accommodations for different people in the classes you know some people like to use modifications i don't really like that word it's just it's all yoga mm -hmm. you know it's just an alternative to another movement or posture um but you have to put a lot of effort into this and do research and figure out what's going to flow best and what's going to feel the best for um, the practitioner. So, yeah, there's there's a lot of work involved, but it's good work and we enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. And you will get a lot out of it. You will definitely get a lot out of it. So, yeah. So we've now moved over to sound healing. General yes. Health. So we end our talks every week with sound healing and self Reiki. And again, these are what I put in these two slides are probably the easiest things that you could incorporate into your day. Um, because when I do them, I do them at night to fall asleep. And so you're in bed anyway, you're trying to relax, you're trying to clear your mind. Why not focus on some sound healing and self Reiki? Pretty simple. So for the crown chakra, we're focusing on the seat of divine awareness um, to connect you to your higher self and promote connectedness to those around you. And when we say that, we mean in the most objective way, just kind of in involving ourselves for the experience, not to form an opinion or to gain anything from it, just to be present. Mm -hmm. It also helps us to overcome unresolved trauma and feelings of isolation from trauma that may have been reinforced throughout our life and in our relationships. And we talked about this before with how we kind of crave that sense of fear so we create this fear with our thoughts or the information that we take in because over time it might have become like our safe place to feel that sense of fear. So this is going to help get you out of this. Um, so I placed a link. It's a YouTube link to heal the crown chakra with Tibetan singing bowls. It's a three hour one, just like all the others. You don't have to do three hours. You could play it in the background, play it to fall asleep to. Play it while you're doing your self Reiki, which is on the last slide. So self Reiki for the crown chakra, our mantras uh, is only the best energies are coming to me. I'm a clear, open, receptive channel for the universal life energy. I am absolute. I accept. I know. And so we have two hand positions for this week. Um, the first one is, and there's pictures on the slide but just placing the hands on top of the head, however you're most comfortable. And of course, if you're lying down in your bed or you know, this might be comfortable, um, or if you're seated, however long you can hold it for, don't create any pain or tension in the body. This is to help you relax and heal. So even if it's just for a couple of minutes, experience that. 
The other hand position is along the sides of the head, not covering the ears, but the temples mm -hmm. and just holding here. Um, so whatever is most comfortable for you. If you know you have um, limitations due to neck, shoulder, whatever else, then just a regular nice mudra, <laughs> opening yourself up, facing upward, index finger and thumb, and just relaxing. And listen to it with your sound healing and focus on good energies and all the good characteristics of the crown chakra and how to well balance yourself. And maybe, you know, if you have to think of something, you know, and you can't clear your mind, try to think of something that will inspire you to incorporate into your daily routine as far as like a sadhana, mm -hmm. whether it be prayers or mantra practice or even yoga practice. So yeah, that's it for. That is, that is it for our chakra series now, isn't it? So yeah, seven chakras. Mind you, Muladhara has not been on Zoom, so maybe we ought to do that at some point in the future. No rush, we'll come back to that. Maybe we'll have different things that we can share again. But that is it for our seven chakras. So next week, maybe we could start working on the sadhana, sadhana practice and see sure. if we can talk about um, different things that each one can bring into a sadhana practice. It, sadhana practice can be something very short or it can be as long as you want. And given that we're on lockdown, you can make it as long as you want. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> devotion to yourself. So yeah. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us today. On that note, I will bid you farewell. Namaste. And thank you so much for your help, Jen. And thanks for the wonderful information. And I will, we will see you next week. Um, and if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.